Welcome back guys to the free FSR3 frame generation mod by Newcam9 just got updated. Now we have built version 0.9. This mod works only on RTX based GPUs. It basically replaces DLSS frame generation with FSR3 frame generation. We already had a standard and a DLSS tweaks edition of the mod available. With this new build, a new universal DLL version of the mod has been introduced. Different types of universal DLL version of the mod are present. I will be covering them in this video. Universal DLL version of the mod has the best compatibility with games among all the versions of the mod available. This is the change log. Universal DLLs now bypass GPU architecture checks for stubborn games like Dying Light Part 2 and Returnal. I actually own Dying Light Part 2. I've already tested this version of the mod and yes, it works. I will be showing you the setup procedure. Good thing is that Newcam9 has provided the installation instructions in readme files for different types of universal DLL mod. Registry key tweaks are not required anymore. With the older versions of the mod, we used to execute registry files to bypass the GPU signature check. Universal DLLs now automatically disable the Epic Game Store overlay due to hooking conflicts. Some people were complaining about the mod not working with their games that they own on Epic Game Store. They should definitely try out this new version. HDR luminance values are now queried from the active monitor, falling back to defaults when necessary. I don't use HDR. Fix GPU driver crashes in Dying Light Part 2 with Universal DLLs. Yes, this is true. Hardware accelerated GPU scheduling status is now locked. That's it. So first I'll show you the setup procedure for Dying Light Part 2. We need to download the Universal DLL version of the mod. Click on the Nexus Mods link. It will take you to this website. First we have the standard version of the mod, DLSS Tweaks edition of the mod. And then we have the universal version. This is the version that you need to download. Click on manual download under it. This version has the best compatibility. You just click on slow download here. You need to have a free Nexus Mods account in order to download any stuff from here. There's the archive file that we just downloaded. Extract its contents. These are the different types of universal mod. DBG help, version, bin HTTP. Last two are the plugins version. First, we have ASI Loader. This is for people who use an ASI Loader to inject mods into any game. Then we have RED4EXT. This is for those people who use RED4EXT script extended to mod Cyberpunk 2077. I'm not into modding my game, so I'll just stick with the DLL versions. I got the best results with DLL version type of universal mod. So just open the folder. Inside the folder, you'll find a readme.txt file. Here installation instructions have been provided. Coding the model. These DLLs are generic replacements that bypass streamlined GPU architecture checks and skip signature override registry tweaks. Each game has different requirements and might use different DLLs. All versions should be tested. In the end, just use that DLL version of the universal mod that works best for you. Some games are compatible with different versions of the mod. For Dying Light Part 2, I'll be using the version.dll file. This readme.txt file is actually present in all of the folders. As you can see, dbg help folder, win http folder. Instructions have been provided even for the plugins. For Dying Light Part 2, I'll just copy these two DLL files present in dll underscore version folder. Version.dll file acts as a spoofer. It basically tricks the game into thinking that our PC has an RTX 40 series GPU. Copy. Don't need to execute any registry file. Just open the game's install directory. I own the Epic Games version of Dying Light Part 2. Click on the three dots here. Click on Manage. Then click on this folder icon here. Open PH folder. Open Work folder. Open Bin folder. Open x64 folder. Paste the files in. Override prompt in my case, you won't be seeing this if you're doing the process for the first time. There's the version.dll file. The process is that simple. Now we just need to enable hardware accelerated GPU settling. Right click anyway on your desktop and click on display settings. Then click on graphics. Then click on change default graphics setting. Make sure this toggle is enabled under hardware accelerated GPU settling. Now we need to enable basing from NVIDIA control panel. Make sure your GPU drivers are up to date. Click on global settings tab here. Scroll down until you find vertical sync. And then set vertical sync to on. You can also apply this setting on a per game basis. Just click on program settings here. Click on add. Find the game's exe file. In my case, it's dying light part 2. There it is. 
scroll down set vertical sync to on click on apply close that's it we are ready to run the game no need to tweak any INI file you don't need to copy any other DLL files as well we are in first I'll run the game without frame generation my PC has an RTX 2070 Super GPU I am using high quality ray tracing preset full HD resolution DLSS enable set it to quality reflex enable I have set it to on plus boost it will help in reducing the latency in game vsync disable we have already enabled it from nvidia's control panel and there's the setting frame generation set it to off start the game here we are getting around 63 fps i'll just drop down perfect scenario for enabling frame generation hard fall There's the undead, I'll engage in combat. Yeah, FPS stays around 60. Now I'll enable frame generation. Set frame generation to on. Game should not crash. Save. Now we are getting around 110 FPS. Unfortunately, the game's HUD elements are flickering. I can definitely observe the smoothness. We have seen this flickering in other games as well. For example, Ratchet & Clank, Rift Apart, Lies of P, Microsoft Flight Simulator, etc, etc. With the official FSR frame generation implementation, in order to prevent the flickering of the game's interface, developers render it at half the native frame rate of the game. Difficult to implement this with the mod. But I can disable some HUD elements. For example, I'll just disable the crosshair. Go to option, go to HUD, set show dot crosshair to off. And yeah, the crosshair is gone now. Current objective, follow Hacken. It's flickering. Can't do much about it. I hope the flickering issue gets fixed with the future versions of the mod. Now I'll be trying out the next game. Now I'll show you the mod setup process for a very popular title, Hogwarts Legacy. A lot of people complain about this mod not working with this game. The thing is, most of these people were using a cracked version of Hogwarts Legacy. They even told me this, I think it was the Empress version. I don't have anything against piracy, it's just that I don't condone it. If it is financially possible for you to purchase the game, go ahead and buy it. If it is not, then do whatever you like. I have some good news for people who use the Empress version of this game. Reports are coming in that version.dll universal mod is compatible with Empress version of this game. I'll just show you the setup process for the Steam version of Hogwarts. Open the dll underscore version folder, copy the two dll files. It's the same process that we followed for Dying Light part 2. Open the game's install directory, select the game from your Steam library, right click, then click on manage, then click on browse local files, then open Phoenix folder. Open binaries folder, open win64 folder, paste the dll files here. Now before starting the game you need to delete the game's config files. I'll show you the directory where these files are present. Just open c drive then open users folder. Here you need to open the folder corresponding to your pc's name. Make sure hidden file setting is checked, click on view, show, then click on hidden items. Here look for app data folder, there it is. Then open local folder. In this directory look for Hogwarts Legacy. Open it. Open saved folder. Open config folder. Just delete windows no editor folder. This folder will be created automatically when you run the game. So let's start it. Shaders are being compiled. Now this game consumes a lot of memory. It is not recommended to enable ray tracing with frame generation mod enabled. It can cause the game to crash. On my RTX 2070 Super GPU, I'll be just using the high preset with ray tracing disabled. In game resolution full HD, DLSS enabled, I have set it to quality. First, I'll run the game with frame generation disabled. Using the high preset, apply. Ray tracing disabled. Yeah, the game has started. There's Hogwarts Castle. 
I'm just flying around hog speed. I'll enter the area here. FPS is around 65 to 70. I'll enable frame generation. Setting applied. FPS increased up to 143. I'll enter hog speed. Pretty sure FPS will drop down. It should still stay above 100. 110. I'll just traverse the area on foot. What happened to these kids? Hand them back. Hand what back, sir? Well, we've not took a thing. Hand them back. This mod works very nicely with this game. I can observe the smoothness. Game is not able to utilize the GPU resources properly without the mod. After enabling the mod, GPU usage increases. It helps in increasing the FPS as well. Now I'll show you how to uninstall the mod. The process is very simple. You just need to delete the DLL files corresponding to the mod. A log file will also be created, so just delete it as well. Now I'll try out a different version of Universal Mod with Hogwarts. Just for the purpose of demonstration, open the DLL underscore win HTTP folder. Copy the two DLL files. Open the games install directory. This is for Hogwarts. Open the Phoenix folder. Open the binaries folder, win64 folder, paste the files here. You know what to do, delete the game's config files first. Same directory, there's the windows no editor folder. Start the game. We are in, I have enabled the frame generation setting, I'll quickly load the game. Hawk speed, I'll just paint around this place. FPS is around 110. We are getting roughly the same performance with this type of universal mod as we got with the version type of it. Now I'll be trying out the next game. Last but not least we have DBG help version of universal mod. I'll be using it with Cyberpunk 2077. Open the folder. Copy the two DLL files. Open Cyberpunk's install directory. Find the game in your Steam library. Select it. Right click. Manage. Click on browse local files. Open bin folder, open x64 folder, paste the DLL files here, overwrite prompt in my case, I'll just skip the permissions. Both files have been transferred, we are ready to run the game. Graphics setting, I'm using the ray tracing low preset, I'll just set DLSS to quality. Rest of the settings are left as this. First I'll run the game without frame generation. Video tab, in-game resolution full HD, in-game racing disabled, reflex enabled. I am standing right outside V's apartment building. Here we are getting around 60 to 66 FPS. 75 FPS now, I will just enable frame generation. Apply. With frame generation on, FPS increased up to 115. I can observe the smoothness, not observing any ghosting around the character models. Games HUD elements are not flickering. This mod works very nicely in this game. With the older versions of the mod, these flying papers were not rendered properly. This issue has been fixed. That's really good to see. Okay, I'll engage in combat now. Kill the cops. <laughs> FPS stayed above 100. I'll hijack the vehicle. Let's go for a ride. All nearby units. We got a situation in Watson. Roger dispatch. What else is new? We'll be right there. Suspect's vehicle has been located. Detail. Wow, the graphics look stunning. 
beautiful lighting. Killed a citizen by a mistake. Yeah, so it's a very smooth experience in this game. That's it with my coverage guys. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.